y'all, it's Lisa D again, and I just got a text from my buddy Desiree in Dallas. She wanted to know why her brother got antibiotics from the doctor when he had an ear infection, but Desiree didn't get anything from the doctor when she had the flu. Well, to explain, I just drew her a sweet Venn diagram. And not just any old Venn diagram, no sir. This is a sweet three-ski Venn diagram. Do y'all want to see what I drew her? Yeah, you do. All right, we've got two circles on the bottom and a big one on the top, all overlapping and awesome. Where two circles overlap, that's what those two circles have in common. And this triangle here in the middle, that's what all three tri circles have in common. Before we get into it, let's remember what we're talking about here. Viruses versus cells. That's it. We're gonna start speaking Greek and Latin here in a second, but don't lose sight of the big picture, y'all. Viruses versus cells. And, uh, ooh, it is already Greek speak time, y'all. All right, our planet has two types of cells, eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells. Big fancy Greek words for cell type A and cell type B. We'll talk about those in a bit. Let's put virus particles here at the top. Now remember, viruses aren't cells. Don't forget that. In fact, from now on, let's just call them virus particles. And we'll put prokes on the left and eukes on the right. Well, there's already one thing we can put for viruses that's different from prokes and eukes. Viruses aren't alive. Let's put that. And we can go ahead and put living for prokes and eukes. Man, let's put a big old star on that one. All right, and while we're at it, let's go ahead and translate these fancy Greek words. Prokes means bacteria. That's it. Eukes are every other type of cell. Plant cells, animal cells, fungus cells, blood cells, algae cells, any type of cell that isn't a germ. Let's write that. Well, something in common between all three of these things, both cells and virus particles, is that they all have genetic material. They all need genes to reproduce. Let's write that in the middle. So let's look at these things. Here's an HIV virus that causes AIDS. You've got your nucleic acids here in the middle. It's got some spikes around it and a capsid. Now, this is a pretty complex virus, but I told Big D Desiree, this is still simpler than even the simplest cell. Here's a prokaryotic cell. This bacterium is E. coli. E. coli live in our guts and help us break down food. Thanks, buddy. But we also know that bacteria can cause infections and make us sick. Now, this is biology, so we have to speak Latin. Germs that make us sick are called pathogens. I made sure that Desiree noticed that there isn't a nucleus. Spoiler alert, there's also some flagella flopping around out there. Ooh, did you notice the ribosomes? Finally, here's a eukaryotic cell. We've seen these a thousand times before. Big old nucleus in the middle, lots of cell parts wrapped up in their own membranes. Got some ribosomes too. Here's a plant cell, still a eukaryote, just has some extra organelles. A cell wall out there, got some chloroplasts rocking out some photosynthesis. All right, y'all, let's keep up with this Venn. We can say, we can talk about a nucleus. Eukes have nukes, but bacteria don't. Remember that, eukes have nukes. And we can go ahead and say that neither virus particles or prokaryotic cells have a nucleus. We can also say that virus particles and bacteria are both pathogens because prokes are sometimes germs. All right, we can also say that prokes and eukes both have ribosomes, but only eukaryotic cells have membrane-bound organelles, you know, cell parts with their own membranes. Okay, one last thing, how these guys multiply. Plant and animal cells do cell division. You remember the word mitosis, right? But when bacteria divide, it's called binary fission. It just means they divide in half and double. Now, viruses are special. They don't actually reproduce. They infect a host cell and the host cell makes more viruses. Now, we'll talk about that more in a bit. For now, let's keep adding to the world's awesomest Venn diagram. Uh, oh yeah, there is one more thing, antibiotics. Antibiotics kill living bacteria cells. Since viruses aren't alive, you can't kill them, right? I mean, you couldn't kill a chair or a pencil. So antibiotics only work against prokaryotic infections, not viral infections. There we go. That's why Desiree's doctor didn't give her antibiotics. It wouldn't have worked. Antibiotics don't work against viruses. 
Wow, that Ven is a beast. I told Big D Desiree that if she could remember all of that, she can remember everything she needs to know. I can't think of any similarities between our cells and virus particles. Maybe y'all can? All right, one last thing. Let's take a look at how viruses multiply and then I'll let you go. Take a look at this picture. It's like a thousand words. All right, first thing, the virus attaches itself to the cell. We call it a host cell. Then it injects its genes into the host cell. See, like this. The flu virus has DNA, but HIV has RNA. Mm, what else? Sometimes the entire virus injects itself into the cell. Next, the virus genes start to take over and they start to multiply. Eventually, so many viruses are created that the cell explodes and the entire process starts over again. Eventually, thankfully, our immune system takes over and it stops the virus before it can multiply more. That's why Big D Desiree was sick for a while, but then she got better all on her own. Antibiotics wouldn't have worked against the flu. Well, I hope this clears everything up for y'all. Until next time, this is Lisa D saying, wash your hands.